Hello guys, welcome to The Great Outdoors RV. My name is Mate, and today I'm gonna to talk about winterizing your camper. So when it gets down below freezing, your camper is most likely not ready for that. And so what you're gonna to have to do is winterize the camper, basically get all the water out of the system. And a lot of times that means putting some RV antifreeze in there to be able to make sure that everything's good to go come springtime. So there are a million different ways to winterize a camper. I wanna show you the basic ideas, an example, so that you guys can figure out how to do this if you want to do this on your own as well as you can call us up and we can winterize the camper for you if you want. So one of the first things that you will need is some RV antifreeze. The reason why you want RV antifreeze is because it's non-toxic, so if you accidentally drink some, you're not gonna kill yourself. Also, if there's a cheaper and a more expensive one, that's because the more expensive one has probably less alcohol and more propylene glycol in it so that it doesn't dry up your seals over time. You will probably need about two to three gallons, depending on how long your coach is and how long the lines in your coach are in order to winterize it properly. Now, if you don't have a bypass kit for your water heater, then you are gonna need to fill your water heater as well, which is another six to 10 gallons. That is right over here. These are your bypass water heater kits. I recommend you buy one of these because it's a good investment over the lifetime of instead of buying that much antifreeze, you can buy one of these. There's a difference. This is a six gallon one, so it's a little bit shorter uh, deal here. And then this is a 10 gallon, so it's a little bit longer one. And this will allow you to bypass the water heater so you don't have to fill the entire water heater full of antifreeze. Another thing that will make life a lot easier on you is buying a winterization kit for your pump. So your water pump is what you're gonna have to disconnect to be able to feed the antifreeze into your system. And then this is a way to do that without having to take your water pump apart every single time you do that. You also have blowout plugs, and these are just two different types. This is one that just quick connects to your uh, air compressor or the bicycle style as well. The reason why I don't recommend winterizing your coach this way is because you're still gonna have water left in your water pump. And of course, that's an expensive item that you'd have to replace come springtime. Uh, so this is another way to do it if you don't wanna use RV antifreeze. I won't go over this today, but that's an option as well. Before you winterize your camper, you want to make sure you flush it all out. So you want to dump your tanks, and one of the processes to do that is your black tank flush. If you don't have a black tank flush built into your camper, you can also buy a wand like this. This hooks right up to your water hose, and then this goes down the toilet and spins around to clean out that tank. Depending on what kind of water heater you have, you might have an anoid rod or a sacrificial rod in your camper. You also might have a plug like this too. If you have a plug, you don't have to worry about this. If you have an anoid rod, this will start to look like Swiss cheese over time. Once it gets eaten up about 50%, you wanna replace it. Since you're pulling it out anyway, you might as well replace it. Um, another thing that you wanna consider is a tank saver. So you're supposed to use this about twice a year during the winterization process is the easiest time since you're pulling this rod out anyway, you'll have access to the bottom of your water heater. You hook this up to the fresh water hose and you stick this in your, your tank and then you slowly pull it out as you have water coming into there and it will flush out all the sediments that have settled in the bottom of that tank, saving your water heater so it lasts about two to three times longer. Okay, so what we need to do is, this is a Rockwood camper. You need to find your water pump and water heater. So this is what your water heater looks like and usually your water pump is gonna be pretty darn close. In this case, we're gonna access it from this storage door and there's usually something blocking you. If there is, you'll need a little square head bit. Phillips will work as well, but ideally you'll have a square head and you need to remove these panels to be able to access everything behind the water pump and by the water filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
Okay, so this is your water heater, and then this is your water filter. In this particular case, they don't have the water filtration system in it right now, so this is kinda nice. Um, it's just filled up with water, so that's okay. When you do take this off, make sure you have some towels because you're gonna make a little bit of a mess right here on the floor here. Also, this one's kinda nice too because this says antifreeze inlet to antifreeze. Close the valve to the tank, open the valve to the inlet. So if you look, this, this hose basically goes right to the water pump and then there's a valve right behind here that you can open and close. That's the one that you're gonna need to, that's what valve it's talking about to close the valve to the tank or open the valve to the inlet in order to make this work. Drain our fresh water. So a lot of times there's a sticker on here that says the fresh water. Otherwise you just have to find your fresh water tank and we're gonna go ahead and open this up, make sure there's no water in it. And this one, in this case, it is completely empty. So we're set on that. Okay, this is an inch and an eighth, or inch and a sixteenth socket. This is specifically for, this is a um, suburban water heater. Sometimes it's a different size if you have a different type of water heater. This is your anode rod right here. Before I pull this out, this is gonna shoot out unless I release the pressure. So what I'm gonna do is pull this little valve right here. Woo! <laughs> and that releases the pressure from the water heater so that thing's not gonna shoot out at me now. Ugh. Go ahead and break that. And once that's loose enough, you can. And this is an example of a water anode rod that's been eaten up a little bit. Now this one probably still has a little bit of life in it. Um, probably one more season before you need to replace this. But basically you wanna make sure this doesn't get too low because you can see right here, it eats it up right here the most. Another thing that you're gonna need to do is turn your bypass valves the correct way. Perpendicular is cl closed, parallel is open. So right now this valve right here is perpendicular. If I were to turn this valve that way, now it's parallel and that means that's open. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the bypass, this middle one, and we're gonna go ahead and close off the ones to the water heater. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this sideways, turn this sideways. And so now this is in the closed position for, for winterization. Now if you have a gas electric water heater, you'll wanna turn off the electric side in case you plug in your camper throughout the winter. The way that you can tell that if you have an on off switch right over here, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this sucker off. That way if you keep it plugged in to make sure your battery is maintained, you're not gonna keep that um, element heating up during the winter time without any water in the system. A lot of times this fresh water or water filtration system is so tight that you can't hand undo it. So this is what to get that off. So what you do is you put it like this, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're gonna go lefty loosey and unloosen that. Again, have some towels ready when you undo this because it will make a little bit of a mess. And at this point, you would normally take the water filter out of here and then you can go ahead and put this back in place. Okay, right now I'm turning this valve back here. Again, perpendicular is closed. Now it's open. So basically what it's doing is it's gonna make it so that the water antifreeze can go through here, through here, and to the pump. And so it's no longer getting water from the fresh water spot anymore. Okay, this is a normal garden hose so you can take your old garden hose and cut off one end you need the male end usually to make this work and then so i'm going to stick this in the gallon of antifreeze or two gallons or however many gallons you have and then this is going right onto the antifreeze inlet don't get that confused with the black tank sewer flush or the city water connect some campers already have the hose for winterization in them. So for example, this one is what you would connect to your jug of antifreeze. And then there's a little valve that you would turn right behind here to turn the system on. 
So to recap, we are going to close all your faucets, including your shower and sink, and they're probably already closed anyway. Then you're going to turn on your water pump. After you do that, you are going to start sucking in the antifreeze through your water pump by opening up the valves closest to your water pump. So if that's your bathroom sink, great, start there. You'll go ahead and turn on your hot water first, or your cold water, either one, but just one at a time, so hot water, and do the same thing. So it'll run clear for a little while, or it'll spurt air a little bit, and then it'll start to have some pink antifreeze in there. Then go ahead and close that off, move on to the next thing. So you're gonna do this for your shower, you're gonna do this for your toilet, you're going to do this for your sink, you're gonna do this for your outside shower, and any other appliances that have water ran to them. Okay, one of the things we need to winterize is the city water connection. So I'm gonna take this screen out. There we go. And then push this little button inside here until I see, oops, pink stuff coming out. There we go. I'll go ahead and put the screen back on and that part's winterized. As you can see, my water filtration system is completely full of pink antifreeze at this point, so you know something's getting in there. This usually takes a few minutes for this to work. Make sure this is not um, out of the jug. Make sure you let some of the antifreeze go into your black and gray tank because they do have like, for instance, this is a P-trap. This has water in it. And so if you leave water in there, you're gonna have a mess come springtime. So you wanna make sure you have enough water that's gone through that P-trap down into your tanks to make sure that's full of antifreeze instead of water. You may also have an ice maker inside your camper. This is a residential type fridge. So this one does have an ice maker. Uh, it has an on off switch right over here. And what you'll have to do, there's two, two things you're gonna have to do. One, turn this on to make ice out of antifreeze basically. And two, there might even be a little valve on the outside of the coach right by the I-beam that you have to open or close uh, to make that work. Another thing that you're gonna have to look at is do you have a water filtration system built into the refrigerator? If you do, it usually has like a little thing that you can fill up with water and a filter right here. You're gonna have to fill up that with antifreeze as well so that you, the water doesn't bust the refrigerator. One other thing that you may have is a washer dryer. If you do have a washer, you're gonna need to run a cycle um, on your washer so that you can end up making it so that the antifreeze is inside the washing machine too so that you don't bust the lines to the washing machine. Same if you have a dishwasher, you're gonna have to run a load of dishes with antifreeze basically. Um, dishes of course don't have to be in there, but that way you're not uh, busting up your dishwasher either. Last thing we're gonna do, once we have the entire system winterized, we're gonna go ahead and put our drain valve lubricant down the toilet. So you can do this down the toilet or down the gray valves. Actually, a little bit of both wouldn't hurt because if you do some down both, then you'll have a protection for your gray tank valve and your black tank valve. So a little bit down the toilet and a little bit down the, the sink in, the, in here will do the job. The other thing is once you do that is you'll want to use your toilet seal lubricant and you'll go ahead and pour this down the toilet after you've done the drain, the, the valve lubricant, and this will protect your seals from getting cracked and, and dry out. So that's how you winterize your camper. Hopefully that's helpful. Again, you might wanna check your owner's manual as well because there are 10 different ways to winterize a coach, unfortunately, and your camper might have a couple different things than I've shown you today. Also, I'm gonna put a link to the Forest River uh, winterization video that they have because that's really good too and it's slightly different video so that you can get a full picture in case your camper is a little bit different than the ones that I've shown you today. And if all of this was way too confusing, feel free to stop by our dealership and we do a kajillion winterizations uh, through September and October. Yeah. We can help you with that. And then we can also do packages where we can do the winterization and the summerization because that'll be your next thing after right. going through the winter. Feel free to comment down below and we can try to answer questions that way. You can also give us a call at 970-313-4337. Thanks guys, have a great day. Mm -hmm.